Okay, Google, what's the weather? Right now in Jerobombara, it's 17 degrees and sunny. We're so connected in the world right now that communicating with friends, family, and even complete strangers on the other side of the world takes almost no effort. It hasn't always been that way, however, and in this video, we'll run through one approach to using a particle device to repeatedly blink a name in Morse code. For the steps, we'll need a particle device, in my case, an argon. However, a photon, boron, or any, any particle device with a built-in LED would work. A text editor, in my case, Visual Studio Code, and the particle CLI. Installation of the CLI varies slightly by platform, so if you don't have it, instructions are linked below. For the optional extended version at the end of the video, we'll also need a breadboard, LED, resistor, and some wires. This tutorial assumes you've already claimed your particle device and it's connected to your account in the particle cloud. Before getting into the code, a quick look at the devices shows that for both the argon and the boron, the built-in LED is adjacent to the USB connector and the D7 indicates that it's in line with the circuit of digital pin seven. On the photon, the LED sits alongside the same digital pin seven. In all cases, addressing pin D7 allows us to control the built-in LED. In my text editor, I've created a blink name.ino file as particle devices are Arduino compatible and can be programmed in a similar way. To begin with, I'll define D7 as the LED pin. And since we are using Morse code, I'll create a time unit variable equal to 250 milliseconds. If we want to adjust the timing of our Morse code, we'll only need to change it in this one location and the timings will be updated throughout the rest of the code. Looking at the timings of Morse code, we can see that the length of a DIT is one time unit, while the length of a DAR is three time units. Within a letter, the delay between DITs and DARs is one time unit, and the delay between letters in a word is three time units. Finally, the delay between words equals the length of seven time units. In the code then, will create variables to represent each of these and set their duration based on our time unit variable. Next, we'll create the setup function and set the pin mode of the LED pin to output. Similarly, we'll create the loop function. Inside the loop, I'll call a blink Peter function that doesn't yet exist and then delay for our word delay time. Of course, adjust the name of your blink function to match your own name. Since I like to have my setup and loop functions near the top of my code, I'll declare my functions above them and implement them below. To begin with, I'll declare the blink Peter function and then in the implementation, Blink each letter with a letter delay in between. For each letter, we'll declare the ones needed and then in implementation, refer to a Morse code alphabet to convert them to the relevant blink sequence. In each letter, we'll blink for the dit or the dar length and delay between each symbol for the symbol delay. This now leaves one function remaining to declare and implement, a blink function that takes in a duration and then sets the LED pin to high, waits, and then sets it back to low. With that done, the code is, is complete. In the terminal, I'll log in to my particle account with particle login. After entering my email, password and authenticator code for two-factor authentication, I have a success message. Next, I'll compile the code in the particle cloud using the particle compile argon command. If using a photon, boron or other device, replace the name of the device with your specific type. A compile succeeded response indicates that our code compiled okay 
and we now have a binary file added to our directory. Finally, with the device connected to the cloud, we can run particle flash dash dash cloud and the name of our device, in my case, Vampire Narwhal. The dash dash cloud flag tells the particle CLI to flash via the particle cloud. In the particle console, we can see the progress of the flashing and the device lights will update appropriately. Assuming the flashing of the code was successful, you should now have a particle device with a built-in LED blinking your name in Morse code. Optionally, to extend our setup without needing any change in the code at all, we can add an LED to digital pin 7 using a breadboard, wires and resistor. When connecting the LED, attach the longer pin on the LED to the wire that connects to pin 7 and for the resistor, we can easily calculate the resistance needed by rearranging Ohm's law. Since the LED I'm using is a simple prototype LED, it's okay to handle a peak current of 30 milliamps for short periods of time. In a Morse code situation, that's fine. So taking our 3.3 volt output for our particle device and dividing by 0.03 amps, we need a resistance of 110 ohms to reduce the risk of damage to the LED and cap the current in our circuit to 30 milliamps. On connecting everything, the external LED now blinks in addition to the built-in LED.